hurry is hurting you. But before I tell you why, I want to let you know that today's video is brought to you by everyone over on Patreon. Help us reach our goal of 40 patrons this month. Thank you for helping this ministry keep going and growing. Now, on to the video. Our culture is fueled by fast. Fast food, fast Wi-Fi, fast travel. We believe that fast is good and slow is bad. This sentiment is continually reinforced in our Western culture. Even just the other day, I was watching a movie and thinking to myself, man, this movie is slow. We are obsessed with fast, but there are a couple catastrophic problems with this. First, perpetual hurry leads to what John Mark Comer calls hurry sickness. In his book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, he explains some of these symptoms. Irritability, hypersensitivity, restlessness, workaholism, emotional numbness, out of order priorities, lack of care for your body, escapist behaviors, slippage of spiritual disciplines, and isolation. So just from my experience, because I've been dealing with this kind of like hurry, overload, busyness, like tendency, um, I relate to a lot of these statements. I don't know if you do like hypersensitivity, um, you know, somebody, somebody can say something to me and it just ticks me off like immediately. Um, and it even, you know, in normal circumstances, it wouldn't be that big thing. Uh, but but because I'm kind of in this state of like hurry and rush and, and almost vulnerability, even just the slightest thing could really set me off. Irritability, same thing. Restlessness, for sure. Uh, workaholism, I don't know. I feel like a lot of us, if you're relating to this video at all, like this hurry mindset, a lot of these things sound very similar to my life. Emotional numbness, out of order priorities, lack of care for your body. I think that's a huge thing. Like when we are in the midst of just hurry, hurry, hurry on to the next thing, um, we don't pay attention to what we're eating or how much we're exercising or getting out. Like it's kind of the joke, of, I, I guess, among myself, like just an inside joke with myself. That's pretty sad um, but that I don't get out of the studio very often. Um, and that's just because when I get in the mindset of like, okay, I got to get to the next thing, got to finish this thing, got to accomplish this thing, you forget about the other aspects that are important, like seeing daylight and going on a walk or whatever. You know, hurry kills relationships. Well, love is patient that we read in the Bible. Love is patient. Love is kind. All that. Hurry is impatient and irritable. Hurry kills love gratitude, appreciation, and like the ability to enjoy the moment. When we are so swept up in what's next or what do I have to accomplish next or okay, I need to schedule these things out and I'm here to there to there, the ability to actually enjoy the moment kind of seeps away. So often we justify our hurry. I do this too. Um, we say things like it takes a uh, hurry to be successful. I don't have time to rest. Um, I have important things to do. And actually we, we might be able to, and maybe you're able to list a lot of, you know, semi legitimate excuses and why you have to hurry. Maybe you have lots of responsibilities. You're caring for family members. You're working towards something important or building a business or whatever. And it's like, Hey, I got to hurry here. John Ortberg says this hurry is not a disordered schedule. Hurry is a disordered heart. You see busyness and hurry seeks to steal our attention from what truly matters. You see, for some of us, we have given ourselves over to the pursuit of money and praise in exchange for something much more valuable. If the devil can't make us bad, he will make us busy. Corey Ten Boom. Hurry is not only a threat to our emotional lives, but it's also a threat to our spiritual lives as well. Hurry, busyness, and overload are all contributing to the relational distance between you and God. But do you know the sad part? Our culture commends hurry, busyness, and overload. It says hustle, right? The hustle culture, hustle mentality, work 60 hour work weeks, um, take on that side hustle, work until you can't work anymore because that's what it takes to make it. Billionaire John Rockefeller was asked how much more money would he need to make to feel like it was enough? And his response was just a little more. 
just a little more. You say, but Isaac, I'm not a millionaire. I'm just trying to live. And I get it. I'm there too. For the last couple of years, I've kind of bounced in and out of this state of hurry, busyness, and overload. My rationalization was, and generally is, that I'll rest when I make it. In reality, I'm putting all that pressure and responsibility on myself to make it, to make life work. But in those moments, I'm not paying any attention to God's sovereignty over my life. Hurry was my solution. But you know what happened? I got burnt out. It was a death spiral. Guilt, hurry, burnout, rest. Guilt, hurry, burnout, rest. Every time I got burnt out after a long stint of hurry, overload, and busyness, I would want to rest, obviously, right? But then this this just overwhelming sense of guilt would come over me because my values were out of whack. Deep down, if you were to ask me, hey, Isaac, what's most important? Man, if I was to answer honestly, I would have to say, well, it's to become successful. It's to make money. It's to be secure. It's to make sure I, I have the rest of my life planned out and it's going to be stable and comfortable and, and secure and all of those things. Those were my values. So when I went to rest, I was contradicting those values and felt guilty because of it. Because rest is was counter to those things that I thought were most important, which was working until you can't work anymore. Hustle. Um, it was, uh, you know, making money and, and uh, becoming successful and gaining prominence and praise and all these things. And so my values were really dictating how I was feeling, but because my values were out of whack when I was doing something that was completely natural and good in resting, I felt a, a, a tension in my spirit. You see, we all suffer from the sin of more. We feel tension in us and we think that the solution is more money or more fame or more power or more views. But here's the thing that I actually needed more of and needed to reorient my values towards. I need more of God, more time with him, more time resting in his presence. I think our response to rest is a great indicator of where our values lie. Sometimes people kind of attribute rest as an obstacle of something that gets in the way of, of their goals or what they're trying to achieve or, or what they're trying to pursue. But as Christians, we're called to pursue Christ. And part of that is, is imitating him, become Im imitators of Christ. And he rested. Rest wasn't an aspect of the fall. It was planned in from the beginning that we would rest, that we would um, slow ourselves, and that we would remember what truly matters, what it, we, which is God, which is the people he put around us to impact, to serve. Um, when we are completely obsessed with things that don't matter or aren't the main point or, or, or distract us from, from, from our true purpose and calling, when we are sidetracked by money, fame, power, all these things, um, it then creates kind of a disorder in us where we can't enjoy rest anymore because we're going against what we think we need to do or we need to become or we feel obligated to, to be but we've been lied to. You don't need to be that person that is a workaholic. That doesn't make you a better person. That doesn't, that doesn't make you better. Um, you don't need to continually fill your life with busyness just to feel like you're, you're doing the best you can. Because look, it's not going to help you in the long run. John Mark Homer says, what you give your attention to is the person you become. What are you giving your attention to? Whom do you want to become? Seriously. Because in my experience, and when we talk about hurry sickness, one of the last uh, symptoms was isolation. And, and in my experience, the people that really pour into um, hurry, busyness, and overload are some of the most isolated people. And I've been there when I am just completely consumed with what I need to do, what I need to accomplish, what I need to, what I need to be in order not to feel guilty. But look, that guilt and that shame that comes as a result of disordered values can be wiped away because look, Christ has freed us from that. He's called our attention onto himself so we can be like him as opposed to when we are continually um, f fixed on our dreams, our goals, and all those things. Man, we push everybody out just to focus in on what we think will bring us peace, but it won't. But look, maybe it takes 
um, somebody that is hurrying constantly and busy and overloaded and and isolated to be worldly successful. Maybe it takes pushing out people and God in order to truly hone in on becoming great in the world's eyes. But to be honest, I never liked the world's definition of success anyway. I need to ask you a question. If there is something that is pulling you towards hurry, busyness, and overload to the extent that is that is damaging your relationship with God and others, you need to really re figure out, you know, I realize there's, there's times in your life that are going to be busy and you're going to be hurrying, all that stuff. But if it's kind of a perpetual state of hurry, you need to ask yourself, is this worth it? Is this really the, the valuable thing? Am I really going after the most valuable thing here? Am I really pursuing what matters most here? Because if I accomplish what I'm working towards, or if I make the goal, or if I do whatever I'm trying to do, and I succeed, will that be worth having pushed out God and everyone else out of my life in order to make it happen? Because I'm just going to be honest with you. I think hurry can wait. And that doesn't mean that I think we shouldn't strive for amazing goals and achievements and work hard. And of course not. But there's a difference between a state of, of hurry and, and uh, kind of just restless anxiety that is producing productivity as opposed to a joyful creativity that flows out of a rest, knowing that it is not up to us to earn our way to God, to, to cover up for our own guilt and shame, but it is an overflow of the grace and the love that God has already provided for us. Those are two very different things. I hope you guys got something from this video. And if you want to check out this book that I got a lot of these ideas from, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry uh, by John Mark Comer, check it out. It's very interesting, very helpful on this topic. Um, thank you again to everyone on Patreon who supports me. Um, we are 33 patrons, We're trying to get to 40 this month. And so if you would have you, if you haven't already joined Patreon, and uh, I really encourage you, sign up five bucks a month. And that would be a tremendous blessing for me and this ministry. So thank you so much. God bless. And I'll see you next time.